Good evening, everyone, and welcome. And um, thank you so much for being here tonight. I'm Michaela Meltzer, and I am the president of the Sisterhood. And this year, the theme for the Sisterhood is Judaism and art. And I'm really thrilled to kick off our season. We have a dad, Hannah, and a dad. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. He was born in New York. He currently lives in BC and he has a tie to Montreal because he went to Concordia and did a PhD in humanities and a master of fine arts. His work has been, is, is in numerous public and private collections across Canada and all over the world. He has won several prestigious awards, including, this is a long one, the Canada Council for the Arts Victor Martin Lynch Stoughton Award for Outstanding Mid-Career Artist in 2009. He has work in Montreal right now. I'm going to let him explain to you all about the work that he has here in Montreal. And if you have any questions, please put your questions in the chat and please uh, could everybody just mute themselves so we can hear a dad. So I'm going to pass it over to you a dad. Hi everybody. Uh, it's not every day I get to talk to a sisterhood. So uh, thank mm -hmm. you for having me. You're welcome. Uh, so I will, uh, I'll thank you for uh, inviting me, Michaela, Michaela. And uh, first of all, I want to apologize because I'm not going to talk about uh I'm trying to think if I'm going to talk about the projects I currently have up in Montreal, but I think not. Um, but uh, I'll show you a bunch of my work and then I'll tell you where you can uh, find find some other bits of my work. Anyway, I'm just going to share my screen here. Okay. So can everybody see this? Yes. Video? Yes. Uh, so first of all, I will kind of tell you about a bit of the mechanics of, uh, of my work, and then we'll get into uh, some projects and, um, and some more recent projects. And at any time, uh, people can put questions into the uh, chat, and uh, we'll have some time at the end for questions as well. Uh, so in, uh, it's funny, I actually saw this was in 2001, this video. And this is the very first of what I called my stills, uh, video stills which is a bit confusing, but what they are is I, uh, I pose people, I set up a scene, uh, and then I ask people not to move. Uh, and so here you can see a group of people trying their best to stay still in the position that I've put them in. Um, and so at first, what looks like a photo or a painting uh, kind of reveals itself to be a video. And so you can see the people blinking, breathing, uh, trying to stay as still as they can. And uh, like I said, this one was done in 2001 when I was doing my uh, master's at Concordia. Um, and I, what I didn't actually really know then was about uh, uh, something called a tableau vivant. And tableau vivant translates to living picture. And um, that's uh, just, uh, so in, Kind of, uh, it's interesting actually because around the birth of photography in kind of uh, 1840s, you also have tableau vivant are quite popular and uh, panoramas, uh, and those are kind of three things that that interest me. Um, so in these ones, this is called uh, Dinner in Florida, and it's uh, this is my grandfather, my grandmother here in the foreground, some uh, great aunts, great uncles, um, and. Uh, Oh, I think somebody's not muted, perhaps. Uh, I'll just keep going. Uh, so here you can see um, I'm kind of trying to make works in the format of a family. I'm muted. Am I muted? Not anymore. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, um, so these are in the format of a family photo. So, uh, you know, we all have these photos in our photo albums, but to kind of take that photographic moment and then expand it over time. Uh, now, another series of works that I've done are in museums. And uh, I've produced works in, in relation to art uh, across Canada and, and around the world. Uh, this one is actually in the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. So I tend to shoot on the day when the museum is closed. 
Uh, so most museums are kind of closed on a Monday or Tuesday. So this is a, a Monday in the museum. And uh, this is my friend uh, posing naked and, and other friends posing as guards. So kind of showing, showing moments of, uh, you know, obviously not okay behavior in, in a museum. And here you see somebody kind of entering, entering the work as well. Um, the, uh, oh, that's funny. I think those videos had sound on them. I, uh, I don't, uh, I, I always strip the sound from the work so that when they're shown, they read like a, like a photo or a painting, uh, not like a video. So you don't have, you know, in a video, we, we expect the narrative, we expect the beginning, a middle and an end. And in, uh, in my videos, uh, they're not looped because then I feel like it's less about time, but they're usually about five, six, seven minutes and, and you just watch it. And then there's two seconds of black and then it'll start again. And I, I don't expect people to necessarily watch the whole video, obviously, but uh, you can kind of come stand in front of it and then, and then leave when you, when you have, uh, when you feel like moving on to the next work. This is a project I was invited to uh, produce a project for the Vancouver Art Gallery in 2007. Uh, so for this project, I decided to, um, try and kind of create a mirror, create kind of a photographic mirror effect, but without using a mirror. So this is uh, five sets of identical twins. And then they posed in a tableau vivant for 10 minutes. And this was performed twice at the, at the Vancouver Art Gallery. Here's another view of it. It's actually quite hard to set up like the, for this, uh, like this work here on the cooler or on the table to, to set everything, you know, have the toilet paper roll off the same way on both sides was, was more difficult than I thought it was going in. And again, I just wanted people to, I think in, in most of my work, I'm interested in having people think about kind of how, how we look at art, uh, uh, our own behavior in front of a work of art and our kind of role as historical agents um, in, in relation to an artwork. These uh, these kids, these twins, actually fell asleep during the during the shooting, <laughs> or not during the shooting, but during the performance. Here's a view from the top. Uh, in um, 2008 or 2009, I went to the Prado in Madrid, and kind of uh, you know I think of um, I create uh, what am I trying to say? I make. Uh, I make artwork and I'm interested in making artwork, but I'm also interested in kind of experimenting and trying new things and pushing ideas further. So I'll often kind of come back to, you'll see in the work I'm gonna show you here, I often will come back to, uh, to another work or come back to a previous way of working and kind of try and push it further. So here you can see, this is, I would say, relates to these ones I did in 2002 of the people in the museum and in relation to artworks. Uh, but here at the Prado in Madrid, it was into, in relation to uh, Velazquez's uh, Las Meninas. Uh, and so here, this is me actually standing here. Uh, and you can kind of see the corner of the video camera screen in front of me. And I'm shooting a video. But this photograph of us kind of producing art becomes a work of art itself. Uh, and in many ways, that mirrors, uh, pun intended, what Velazquez is doing here, where, uh, you know, here's the artist painting. Here's the back of the painting. Uh, but actually what he's painting is this scene here that you're then looking into. So this is the video that, uh, that I was shooting in that moment. So you have these two young men holding this mirror uh, as a way of kind of inserting themselves into the work. And of course, here you have Velazquez's mirror that he painted um, that some people think is the king of que king and queen uh, patrons looking out from the work. Uh, are people able to see my mouse on the screen? Yeah. Yes. Great. Uh, and then uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the day in Madrid, I shot these two, which were kind of uh, you know nobody touched the sculptures, but I thought if they're going to stop me from shooting something, it'll be this, so we'll save it for the end. So it was a double headed uh, uh, sculpture. Um, and of Eros and Aphrodite. And so then I had a woman kissing uh, this one and called this one Aphrodite. And this one have the man kissing and call it Eros. And there's actually, there's a video um, 
of this where you see them both almost kissing the sculpture and saying as still as they can. Um, I think it's in the new wing of the uh, Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. Due to the pandemic, I haven't been in Montreal as, as much as I like to be. In uh, 2009, I did a project on uh, Jericho's Raft of the Medusa. So I'm sure many of you know this work. It's at the, uh, at the Louvre in Paris. And uh, I was actually invited to, sometimes I'm given carte blanche and I can uh, invent the project. And sometimes I'm invited to work on a specific project. Um, so in this case, I was actually invited to 100 Mile House, which is a city in Northern BC uh, and invited to work on a project kind of restaging this work. So this was my first time restaging an artwork. Um, and, and with these uh, community projects, for me, a lot of the, the fun and kind of what I think hopefully comes across in the work is the fact that the kind of community put this, put this thing together. So here we are in the bingo hall, uh, setting up to hang the backdrop. setting up the raft. And with this piece, we actually performed. So mostly in my Tableau Vivant, I don't, uh, I don't have a live audience. It's mostly recorded on video. And then the uh, video on a screen is the, is the artwork that's left and what's shown to the public. Uh, but here we did a performance for kind of the local community because a lot of the kids in this project um, you know, had family and friends that wanted to see it. So we had some uh, two nights of, uh, of public viewings. Actually, sorry, one night of public viewings. And the next night we, we shot photos and videos. And this is, uh, this is the video we shot. And often on these projects, the people who, um, who take part in the project, you know, so the people in these, the models are also the ones that help build the set. Uh, and so there's kind of a kind of a summer camp feeling as people are kind of coming together and, and creating something. It's the empty raft. These are uh, photographs from the project. This is a video. And so as, as you'll see in other works of mine uh, that I'll show you, I like an aesthetic where I feel like it's kind of like a high school theater aesthetic. So at first it looks very uh, lush and rich. Um, and then you can kind of see that, you know, this woman's wearing underwear that's been dipped in coffee. And, uh, you know, this guy's wearing just pants we found at the Salvation Army and just kind of creative use of fabric and... Uh, um, so, because I like the way that the image will then delaminate. And so the things kind of gel and then fall apart. And when you're watching it, um, because nothing actually happens, it gives you the opportunity to kind of have that, uh, have that time in the work, kind of look at things, um, think about things and wander, wander around within the image, the same way I think you would with the uh, painting. There's also, I think, like here you can see this young man breathing here. Uh, you know, I think there's also an element of knowing it's a recording, knowing, you know, that it was shot in 2009 and this kind of seeing, seeing kind of a moment of life kind of recorded in that period and then transposed to whenever it is that you're seeing the work. So, uh, this is a project that I did actually with my mother. I think my uh, um, my mother and father might be on this uh, call, and they don't they don't always make it to my artist talks. So I uh, welcome if you're there, and uh, I will uh, yeah tell you about this project. So I was approached by the Koffler Center in uh, Toronto, um, and it's funny because when they when they approached me, uh, they didn't tell me that I had to have kind of uh, Jewish content, family content. But I think I put that uh, I put that pressure on my on myself, um, and so uh, this was. I, I think I spoke a second ago about some projects are kind of uh, on a theme, or I'm given something to start. Uh, this one was carte blanche. Um, so what I ended up focusing on is this uh, photograph that I had because uh, you know family photos to me are kind of endlessly 
uh, intriguing as a kind of a genre. Um, and uh, this, so this picture on the left here is, uh, I have a better, better picture of it here. So this is my, this is the, the original or the photo that I had. Um, and it's my grandmother here, my grandma Sally, uh, painting a portrait of my mother. And I just, I've always loved since I was a kid, this kind of triangle here, right? And my mom here looks like she's maybe 11 or 12. Uh, my grandmother, I don't know, I don't know how old she was, so I guess somewhere between 30 and 40. And then in the painting here, it's like a third person, right? It, it looks distinctly older than my mother. And so I think that this is kind of like three generations somehow. Uh, and also, if you look down here under the easel, you can see kind of she's on a she's on a raised platform, like maybe a school gym, and there's a piece of fabric here. And so I've always liked to kind of pull pull apart an image. Uh, there's other projects that I've seen or that I've done that where I've pulled apart photos. Uh, oh, I will say if um, if people uh, want to see other projects, they can always go to my website. Uh, I'll put it in the chat later. Um, because I'm, I'm not talking about all my projects today. Uh, and so for this project, I, re, uh, I wanted to remake this photograph. So kind of re-enter this historical, uh, not historical, but this fam old family photo. Uh, and so I um, found actors to play uh, my grandmother and my mother as a child. And uh, it's funny because I couldn't actually remember before this talk, I wanted to check with my mom, but I'm pretty sure that I got my mom to make this painting. Uh, so my mom repainted the painting that her mother had painted of her. Sorry, that's confusing. And this is in my studio here in Vancouver or my old studio. And then also, as you can see down here, recreated these benches. Uh, I'll just jump back a few. So here you have this kind of bench and the, the, uh, this kind of bench underneath the, what looks to me like kind of a stage uh, and the fabric in the background. And so trying to recreate as much as I could every, every aspect of that. Uh, and I shot it in two horizontal videos. So here you can see a split in the middle and there's this top video and the bottom video. Uh, and so these two videos were then projected on the, uh, in the gallery. And so you would walk in and see them on this kind of uh, wall, like a kind of a drywall, like you're building something. Uh, and you'd come around the corner and there would be the uh, original painting here on the right that my grandmother painted. And then here is the copy of it and tucked in here was the set. And so kind of, I wanted you to kind of be able to kind of enter this family history. And also in the exhibition, because my mother is also an artist and a performer, and my father as well. Um, I, uh, my mother produced some collages for this uh, exhibition. And so she took old photos of her performing and of our whole family um, and made these collages that were then in the, in the exhibition as well. So here you can see these old, uh, cut up old family photos um, stuck glued back together into these uh, quite great collages. And then so these, so the exhibition included uh, the set of collages, the, uh, the piece I just showed you. And then here on either side were these two vitrines of old, old family photos. Um, and the, this was the left vitrine, and here was the right vitrine. So as you can see, they're just mirror, I'll just flip back and forth, they're mirror images. So if you look at these three images here, they're mirror images. And so what I, what I did was collected, um, I found that uh, it's kind of uh, grim perhaps, but I was fascinated by how, uh, you know, if you take this image here, this is my mother's graduation picture, I think. And so my grandparents would have distributed this when she graduated. And then over time, as relatives pass away or people, you know, you're always kind of going through photos and returning photos to people, those photos come back. And so I was fascinated by these two sets of, that's my mother blowing fire right here. Uh, I was fascinated by the way, um, if you look at this photo here, for instance, uh, in here, it's missing a corner. So the kind of, uh, real world life that these images have as a tactile object and how um, they kind of change over time. They deteriorate, perhaps they were in the sun uh, and then they come back to like their kind of source. And then I had multiple copies. And so kind of comparing this, uh, 
this uh, these two lives that these two images had. And there was a there was a video uh, accompanying this um, uh, exhibition as well. So this is my mother on the right. So we went to Florida to visit my grandmother and uh, recorded this video. So I'll play. I'll, it's about five minutes long. So I may not let the whole thing play, but I'll play. Uh, I'll play some of it for you. My name is Sally Gross. I was born in the Bronx, New York in 1921 by a Dr. Leff, who my mother thought was very good. Now I live in New York in a senior housing project. I, I, I live by myself. My husband's gone and my kids have all moved out into their own homes. Around 1951, the Navy sent my husband orders to move to Kodiak, Alaska. And he asked me to join. So I took my three girls and we all went up to Alaska. Yeah, well, Seymour, uh, before we went to Kodiak, Alaska, we decided we needed a camera because this was country that we haven't been to yet. And we want to take some pictures for, for, to show other people that won't be going to Alaska. So uh, we bought a camera. Of course, cameras at that time were nothing like they have today, but it was still a camera and it still took a picture. We got up into Kodiak. And Kodiak was the place where we were gonna be stationed. He was gonna be there. He had a particular job that would keep him working for a couple of years uh, off, the sh off the ship. And, uh, and I could stay with him with my three children. So they gave us a house in town that somebody had put together and it was built from ships. <laughs> when uh, we lived there, uh, there was no temple actually uh, because there were very few Jewish people. And uh, when we wanted the rabbi for a holiday or something, uh, for the few little families that were there, he would fly in and he would collect the people. Uh, we, we made a, an arrangement to see him either at the officers' club or, well, someplace else, usually at the officers' club. And he would visit with us, and then he would fly back the next day or so. First thing I did was join an art class. And uh, I, bring, I had an easel, and I had paints. And I would bring that in and I would sit there and do my work. And everybody else did their work. And it was interesting. Well, I, I we got very comfortable there at Kodiak. The, their paintings were all hanging up all over the room. They, they made a party and they had all the artwork hanging and people were enjoying and looking at it. And some of them even enrolled into the art class because they wanted to join us. When I look at the pictures now, I remember the things we did up in Kodiak, things that I sort of put out of my head because we don't do them here. But it reminds me of the territory there and the fences and how we kept out the bears and the fishing. It was a very interesting area. And that was my life in Kodiak. I became an artist. <laughs> Sorry, it makes me a little verklempt to see her. Um, so uh, now I will talk about, you know what? I'm gonna skip over this project and I will show you a project that I, uh, oh. Um, I will show you this project first, and then we can have some questions. And then I will, uh, if there aren't questions or if people want, I'll keep going and show you a project I just completed. Uh, but this project was one uh, that I did in 2019, so before the pandemic, uh, but about a previous pandemic. It's for about the Black Death, uh, the plague, and uh, it's based on Giovanni Boccaccio's book, The Decameron, from I think 1344 or something. Uh, and it's a book about um, a group of people, uh, 10 people who uh, I guess now you would call it uh, isolating. They isolated themselves 
for 10 days uh, so they wouldn't get the plague. So they went out in the countryside and uh, to pass the time, they each told stories each day. And so the Decameron is Deca is 10 uh, or 100. So it's 10 times 10 is 100. So there's 100 stories in the book. Um, and uh, this book has kind of inspired artists for hundreds of years. Um, and so what we did, in uh, I was invited to do a project for uh, Richmond, which is a suburb here in Vancouver. And, and when I do a project, I like to kind of uh, involve local people and have also a kind of a local story be told. Uh, for this project, I wasn't sure kind of which of the histories of Richmond to address. And so instead, I brought in a kind of very foreign uh, story and let people inhabit the project with their, with their bodies, with their time, with their energy. Um, so the five paintings we chose were this one, uh, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And so uh, this one and this one are kind of, uh, and this one are illustrating stories from the Decameron. And this one and this one are showing these people uh, sequestered. Um, and so when I do a project like this, really, we need a space, we need uh, some food and a group of uh, usually volunteers, uh, art students, people in the community, really whoever whoever is interested in taking part. Uh, so here we had one of the longer production periods, we had a month. So uh, this is honestly, I think this is either day one or day two. So we're already in there and we're already painting. Um, and it's a real kind of hive of activity. I think for this project, we had maybe 20, 25 people really take part in the project. And the people you see here, like sewing or that I'm sewing, people painting, they also become then the models in the work later on. So this is uh, Isabella and the Pot of Basil. So uh, this story, she's, uh, I think her husband has cut off her lover's head. Uh, and so she buries it in this pot of basil and uh, she's kind of uh, embracing her lover, but his dead head that's now uh, growing basil. And a big part of, of these projects is always sitting around and eating together. Um, I think I'm sure everybody on this call can uh, can relate to the kind of, uh, I don't know how to say it, the, the power, the feeling, the warmth, the, uh, the, you know, what happens when people get together in a large group and eat. Um, and so here again, you can see the people that were making the project then become models in the project. And uh, for this project, we, we always are eating together, but we also had a couple uh, meals, um, kind of more staged meals. So yes, we were eating food, but then I would ask them to stop, uh, pose them a little bit, set up the camera and ask them not to move. So this is one of those, uh, one of those moments. And these videos then became part of the exhibition, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, here you can see, so we have kind of printouts and we just basically break everything down into components and then get to work uh, making it. And in the, I, I never really turn down a volunteer or a model and people kind of show up and then somehow by some kind of strange magic kind of fall into their roles. The people that want to build things out of wood, uh, build things out of wood, the people that want to paint, paint things and uh, things always seem to get done on time. It's always uh, uh, hectic and improvisational uh, and stressful as well. But in a way, I think, uh, I guess I probably thrive on that. And uh, for the participants, I think they enjoy that they can kind of uh, come and go as they want and can kind of follow their interests and their interests can even change while we're working on a project. Uh, so this, uh, her name is Angel. She actually became the model for this piece. So here we're just kind of, uh, you know, you like to test it as you go to see if you think it'll work. I focus more on this uh, Isabella and the Pot of Basil piece, just so you can see kind of one piece, but in the background, you can see we're bringing other pieces uh, to life as well as we go. And the, the construction, like I said previously, it's kind of in a kind of a, uh, low budget theater kind of mode, uh, which now that I think about it is probably directly from my parents who were in the theater and I grew up around that. Um, so it should be, yeah, I guess that should have been an obvious realization. Here I am shooting some uh, videos while we're, uh, 
while we're eating. So for this project, we worked for about two and a half weeks in, the, uh, in their theater space, uh, building the sets. And then we moved over into the gallery. Uh, and in the gallery, we set these all up. So here you can see uh, the pieces. So this is, uh, these are plastic leaves that are real in a real pot. This is the wooden uh, thing that we built, the costumes that were sewn. This thing hanging here, this lamp, I think you saw a woman painting that earlier and it's just cut out of a flat piece of plywood. And then you see here, I have three cameras. So one's shooting uh, photos and the other two are shooting video. Um, and uh, I never know which kind of shot I'm going for. So I like to shoot kind of more than, more than one camera because uh, when you're shooting Tableau Yvonne, people are standing still for five, six, seven minutes. You, uh, you, know, you can't try as many poses as you would like to. So I try and do different kind of angles on the poses that I have. Uh, and here on the left, you can see, so uh, I often have a big screen like this attached to the camera so that I can kind of see a live preview of, of what, what I'm getting through the camera. And I bring in, if you, if you think that it suddenly looks more professional than before, it's because I try and bring in, if I have a budget, a professional lighting crew and, uh, and hair and makeup, and that kind of uh, uh, brings everything up a bit at the end. So here's kind of a cast and crew photo. Whoops. So here again, you see the models uh, kind of uh, doing, doing each other's makeup. Here we are then in the gallery setting up the exhibition. And so at the end of one month, you had this. Uh, the, show, the show opened at the end of a month. We, we shot the videos on, let's say, day 28. Uh, then uh, set it all up in the gallery. And so in the gallery, you see kind of the, the, some of the sets, a bit of fabric here and there, uh, and the videos are projected. The videos in this case were projected, uh, but you could see through the backs of them. They're on, uh, I don't know if I have one here, you can see, but uh, from the front, you would see this, and from the back, you would kind of see the frame like on a painting, but you'd see the projection through there. So they're quite beautiful from the back as well. Here said this, and so in the in the back room here, if you remember the uh, the photos I showed you where we were shooting videos while we were eating, those were uh, screened back there, um, along with uh, audio recordings of the models and participants kind of talking about how they how they came to uh, mostly how they came to Richmond, how they came to this project, um, kind of a little kind of snippets of their life story, not not totally dissimilar from the video I just showed you of my grandmother. And here's the uh, here's the video uh, the final video, so you can see what what it looked like. At this scale, it's kind of hard to see the movement, but when they're when they're projected on a large screen, you can see her blinking and kind of shifting weight on her legs and the, the dress kind of flowing a little bit. And these are the other videos. I guess this is a, this is kind of a good place to end since we're all uh, doing these things on Zoom because we can't uh, we're all sequestered still. <laughs> so now, like I said, I have another project that I just completed, which I can show you. But I think I'll head into the chat and maybe take some questions. I have some questions for you. Yes. So. 
I, I'd like to, I think people would like to know a little bit about your background and your inspiration. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, about getting into art. And a question too is, um, have you always done living pictures? Have you ever done, I know you do some sculpture work, so paintings, uh, like things like that, or is it more sort of um, like talk about? Yeah, Maybe talk about with your background and let people know a little bit of how you got to where you are. Sure. Um, so uh, here, you know what I'll do? I'll open, uh, I'll open another screen and, and show some other work. Uh, so I've definitely done some... Uh, some paintings and and I've done a lot of photos, obviously. Uh, here, let me just uh, share here. This is my uh, website, so anybody can uh, plug this in. But uh, this is a set of uh, painted works I did on top of uh, the Rodin Museum in Paris let me go and shoot the plasters of, uh, of Rodin sculptures. And so I, I then took those uh, photos that I took of the sculptures and painted uh, on a layer of glass uh, in front of them. So you can kind of, the photos are kind of obscured a bit by the painting and you can kind of see behind the paint a little bit. Okay. Uh, but in my, uh, yeah, I guess my parents were, uh, I better get this right if they're on the call. Uh, they met in Israel. Uh, my father was working in the theater, I think making uh, sets and backdrops. Uh, my mother had been a stage manager in New York um, and uh, they met, uh, got married. Uh, I was born in New York. Then they moved back. To, you could hear my grandmother's uh, wonderful Jewish New York accent in the video. Uh, then they moved um, to London where my grandfather, uh, other grandfather lived. And um, that's where they kind of made the transition from being, I guess you'd call it, I don't know, behind the scenes in theater to, to performing. Um, and uh, actually, that's funny to say that because I think they also performed in Israel a bit. But anyway, uh, then they started their own uh, theater group, um, toured around. Uh, my father came out when I was maybe seven as gay. Uh, my father now lives in San Francisco with his partner. My mother lives in uh, Vancouver here with me, or not with me, but in the same city. And... Uh, so it's interesting because with for so many artists, the kind of uh, the voyage, the trip, the transition to being an artist is something that uh, there's some friction with their family. You know, their parents want them to be a doctor or a lawyer and uh, they want to be an artist. For me, uh, there was none of that friction. When I told my parents I wanted to go to art school, they were fine with it. Um, and uh, my mother actually helped me write my first Canada Council grant. So uh you know, and then, then I think as a, uh, um, oh, you know what I'll do here? Let me just pull up a couple of images if I can. Uh, the, uh, I guess the, um, you know, there's a period in a kid's life where you don't, uh, uh, where is this? Um, you know, where you don't, um, want to do what your parents are doing anymore and for that uh i'm in trouble here you know i didn't i didn't want to perform anymore and so i kind of pushed away from that uh and then um i don't know i can't find it uh so i kind of pushed away from that and then later on found found that it kind of worked its way into my art which i suppose is uh one's voyage through life um yeah um <laughs> so is it true that elton john's purchased some of your art oh that I, is true that elton john purchased yeah he purchased five of my uh, photographs that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah it was pretty exciting so did you actually deliver them to him did you ever meet did you meet him no or? no i did not uh it was um uh it was in calgary so i, okay. I was not there yeah Okay. Um, what is your favorite piece that you've done and why? That's a hard question. Um, I think I, I always have, uh, yeah, that's a good question. In some ways, I, it's always the last piece that I did. Uh, but then the other way, the, the last pieces are always kind of uh, harder to, uh, harder to talk about. 
Um, let's see here. Yeah, it's hard. I, th I mean, I think also when you're when you're making art, you always are interested in it for different reasons than uh, than than a viewer might be interested yeah. in. If that makes sense. Yes. So, uh, yes. And also, there's stories that that you you know from a work of art that uh, that aren't kind of don't come across in the in the work. Uh, so is it, is that why living stills is is like telling a story? with more life than an actual painting? Is that your inspiration behind the living stills? Yeah. Um, well, originally I was looking at uh, kind of early photography and uh, kind of, uh, you know, that moment when like before they had, you know, now you just take a photo and it kind of stops motion. Um, originally exposure times were 20, 30 minutes and people had to often you see they're like leaning on something or they even had devices to hold their, uh, to hold their heads up. Okay. Um, but, and so it's that kind of the elongated moment that kind of, uh, that I like the idea of and that, that kind of tableau vivant then relates to that. And I think now it's quite interesting because, uh, you know, if somebody picks up a cell phone and aims it at you to take a picture, you don't know anymore if they're taking a photo or a video. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there's that kind of like in between is that kind of, uh, nervousness of not knowing and and that kind of uh you know i think now in a way we're all kind of there's that kind of performative moment for a photo right and when you don't know if it's a video or photo you're kind of you're smiling or you're posing and you're you're kind of becoming that that thing that you want to be captured in a photo and then that moment getting kind of dragged out over time if that makes sense yes yeah, have those live photos that you can take on your phone <laughs> if you press on the button for a minute it's kind of that's what it reminds me of did um is there a is in any way your jewish background influence your work in any way or has in the past or yeah um, uh i don't know it's a good question uh I like to think I'm hardworking, but then I also never feel like I'm doing enough. Maybe those are <laughs> Jewish traits. Um, uh, um, yeah, it's funny. I, I'm actually, I'm working on a project now around, um, uh, I've been asked by a, a Jewish collector here in uh, Vancouver to do a full-size uh, Guernica. If uh, I can, maybe I'll, I'll show a little bit of that. Um, uh, when your exhi exhibitions are up, how long do they last? These video living pictures. Does it um, depend on the museum? How long is the? Uh, sorry, I don't understand the question. How long is when you you make these living stills, yep. these living pictures, and then you put them in a they're in a museum and they're on an exhibition? How long is that exhibition usually for? Oh, I see. Um, the exhibition is usually uh, a month or so. Okay. I'd say, yeah. Here, I'll, uh, I'll show some of this project. If people, are there, I can't see if there are questions in the chat, so I'll, I'll go no, to this. I think we're good after this. Yeah. Um, so this is, uh, this is the project I was working on now. I mean, I guess also in a way I feel like a kind of... Uh, well, this this project is. Uh, um, do people recognize? Do people know, I guess, Picasso's Guernica. Okay. So this this uh, painting by Picasso, painted in uh, thirty seven, and it's about uh, the bombing of the city of Guernica, um, which was. Uh, um, it was actually the so the Nazis did the bombing, but it was kind of like uh, a test run. Um, so this was in Spain. Um, and they just uh, bombed the hell out of Guernica and it was an attack on civilians. Uh, and so Picasso um, then painted this as a kind of uh, anti-fascism, anti-war uh, painting. Um, and I had done a project on this, which you can find on my website in uh, 2016 uh, in Augusta, Georgia. So um, in the United States. And then uh, it's in an exhibition now in uh, the Remi Modern or Remi Modern in uh, Saskatoon. Uh, mm -hmm. And so they had asked me to do uh, kind of, uh, well, they actually saw what I was doing here for this collector in uh, in Vancouver. Uh, 
and and for this one, it's going to try kind of, uh, I haven't really figured out how it's going to work yet, but it's going to be a remake of this as a bronze sculpture, uh, full size. Picasso's painting is uh, 12 feet tall and like 25 feet wide. So uh, it'll be about that size and it'll be a kind of a mix between uh, Guernica and then also, um, I guess, my my family history and, and the collector's family history will be kind of integrated into the work. Um, but I think there's... Uh, so in uh, let's see. So in Saskatoon, uh, we collected a bunch of, I guess you would call it junk, just stuff, uh, used stuff, and and you know I think that that um, that story of uh, you know something from nothing uh, yeah. Yeah. Is, is kind of uh, I think a, a Jewish story. I mean, there's lots of other uh, groups of people that have you know been been through stuff and had to pull pull stuff together again. Right. Um, but, uh, so here we, we took all this stuff and this is Adora Mar, uh, Picasso's, uh, uh, lover that took these photos of the making of, uh, Guernica. And so these are shown across from what we did in the exhibition. Um, and so they are working with a group of, uh, of art students from, uh, University of Saskatchewan. We, we rebuilt it. So again, okay. not, not knowing what the finished thing will look like, same as other projects. Uh, but knowing that the show is going to open 11 days after I get there. Wow. Uh, so we assembled, uh, this is uh, me, obviously, my assistant who came from here as well. And then these five uh, students that we worked with, art students. And behind them is all the kind of junk that we collected. Uh, and then just uh, building, um, building, building Guernica. So bringing... Uh, bringing everything up from the from downstairs so people could kind of go down and take the parts they wanted and then uh, putting together putting together our version of Guernica which I called uh, Saskatoon Guernica. Oh, thank you well I think uh, we can wrap it up but I want to thank you because for me art I, I've, I did not, I've never seen like a still living life um, collection, you know, Harry Potter pictures that move are like the closest thing, but it really shows you how broad um, art is. It's not just a painting that someone does or, or sculptures. So thank you so much for enlightening us and sharing with us your incredible work. And can you just tell people what you have in Montreal if they want to just check out? I think you sure. have the blocks and the rings. Yeah, I'll put on, I'll, I'll write some. So uh, my website is here. Uh, my gallery in Montreal is uh, Pierre-Francois Woodlet Art Contemporaine up on uh, Rochelle near uh, Parc La Fontaine. Uh, and then I have, uh, I have public art projects. Actually, uh, if people know the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts, there are those large stone blocks in front of the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. Yeah. Um, so uh, those here, actually, I'll just, uh, I'll switch my share for a minute. Um, and then I can just quickly show so people know what to look for. Um, where, cheers. Um, but uh, yeah, if people want to see my art in person, they can either, uh, Go to my uh, uh, PFOAC is a place, uh, my art gallery, Pierre Francois Roulette Art Contemporain. Okay. Um, otherwise, uh, public art. So I have uh, these rings on the side of, uh, of the uh, Tour de Canadienne uh, okay. down, by, down by the uh, Bell Centre. And, and the significance of the rings at the Bell Centre? These are, embarrassingly enough, uh, hockey puck. <laughs> so oh, okay. okay. Well, I should have realised. It's the bounce of a hockey puck, but as someone who's uh, doesn't know so much about sports, this was the closest I could get to uh, sports themed artwork. Uh, and then um, these are the blocks in front of the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts that I designed. They go uh, up and down uh, Sherbrooke and then uh, up to Musée. And on the Musée, they have uh, the museum's collection on them. Okay, we do have more questions while you're there. Oh, cool. Um, oh, there's a few. I don't know why I missed them. Okay, so first of all, where in Saskatoon was the exhibit? Oh, at uh, Remy Modern. Remy Modern, okay. Which is, um, is an amazing building. It's a new, it used to be the, uh, oh, I don't remember now, but it used to be a, a museum whose name I can't remember. And okay. then uh, uh, this woman, Remy, uh, 
um, well, and I think the government as well funded the building of a brand new uh, kind of state of the art big museum. Nice. It's quite a an amazing nice. Uh, where do you cast your bronze, your bronzes? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I can't answer that yet because I haven't ever cast a bronze before. This is, uh, <laughs> okay. I'm, heading in, I'm heading into a mammoth. Uh, I know it sounds like I knew what I was talking about because it's going to be a huge okay. project, but I, I actually don't. Okay. Uh, so maybe, maybe in Canada, maybe abroad. Okay. What about copyright issues? Uh, with, um, with the paintings. The yeah. Uh, well, usually quite often I'm invited. Um, otherwise, uh, it would be kind of a, uh, well, in, in like the one where the woman's like, uh, the guy's running naked towards the painting and the woman has her hand towards the painting uh, or at the Prado in Madrid. I mean, for one, I'm invited, but also uh, these paintings are old enough to be uh, past copyright. Okay. Um, but uh, sometimes I ask permission otherwise. Um, and uh, also, yeah, I've been told that it, I don't need to worry too much because it's, uh, what do you call it? It's uh, like, kind of like editorial, like it's not, um, it, it would never be mistaken with the original. Okay, Susan, somebody, Susan somebody is shaking, shaking her head. <laughs> Susan, do you want to unmute yourself a minute and just uh, explain? Or you could just send me your fee schedule. <laughs> uh, we can't hear you, Susan. Maybe uh, maybe the other Susan can unmute her. Oh, oh there we go. Okay. You could Google me, SusanStromberg.com. Okay. I'm, every time I put a sculpture on the internet, somebody copies me. And I, I'm very sensitive about copyright. And so I would never copy a Picasso. But you can copy the idea of Guernica, but you have to change it, which I believe you must have done, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> it looks like I did. I'm very sensitive to <laughs> artists not uh, having proper copyright, like an author would, for example. There's copyright for printing, but there isn't a proper copyright for artists. But I'm wondering... I respect it. I don't go copy Henry Moore, even though I went to his place, and I wouldn't copy him. I wouldn't copy you, and it's just a matter of discretion. And it's it's also it should be a legality, but for some reason there's no artistic copyright enforcement. But you shouldn't do it. Well, thank right. you, Susan, thank for you. bringing that to our attention. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. how do you feel about it, Dad? Um, I uh, I think I'm kind of doing it in uh, I don't know if a respectful way is, but I, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh, I'm not. You know, I try not to rip off contemporary artists, and uh, I think the works that I'm uh, riffing on when I do do that are kind of. Uh, works that are kind of uh, in the public domain. Um, and also I think my work would never be mistaken for that. Yeah. Uh, somebody so, says, what are the stone blocks about? Uh, the stone blocks are, um, you mean uh, this, this project I'm assuming? By the museum, yeah. Yeah, so I've done a couple with these. I mean, uh, public art I think of as quite separate from the rest of my practice. Um, and I, uh, so the, the the kind of the brief, if you will, for this project was um, people, I guess everyone in Montreal knows the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts, but you know, there are those uh, buildings along Sherbrooke that are quite different, right? You have the, uh, the Demaray Pavilion, you have the uh, Hornstein Pavilion, you have, uh, so you have all these different buildings and they don't, uh, there wasn't kind of a cohesive uh, look or feeling there. So part of the brief was to create something that kind of tied it all together. Uh, now, I also knew there would be um, artwork on the street like there, like there is at the moment. So my, I was hoping to, uh, my plan with this was that uh, like here on Sherbrooke, that they would actually have art out here on the street, which uh, didn't happen because, uh, you know, I think they probably thought it was too risky. But um, I had to make something that kind of uh, created a gesture that 
tied everything together, but also I didn't want to kind of compete with the, uh, with the artwork that I knew would be out there as well. And that I knew would be kind of rotating uh, mm-hmm. and also giving people kind of a, a way to uh, place uh, in my public art. I like to give people a place to, uh, you know, to relax, to stretch, to, uh, to hang out. Okay. Um, so that, that I would say, yeah. Same, and same like last that. question. How yeah. did you end up at Concordia? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, my wife, uh, after we got married, said she wanted to move to Montreal. And I didn't want to be the lame uh, boyfriend or I guess husband at that time that said like, oh, let's just stay in Vancouver. So I said, OK. Uh, and then I had no idea what I would do there because uh, my French is not good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I applied for my master's uh, and I got into Concordia. So mm-hmm. I did my master's there and then um, fell in love with Montreal and did my uh, PhD there and then uh, had kids. And then my wife wanted to move back to Vancouver and I wanted to stay in, uh, in Montreal. Um, but uh, so I would have had to either stay in Montreal alone or come back to Vancouver. So there you go. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate you taking the time out to share with us. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone else for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you at another event on a different artist for this year. So thanks again, Adan. Much appreciated. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye. Bye.